If you're building your entire brand on rented land that is social media, you are vulnerable. If you know anything about social media, you know that platforms come and go. At some points they have great organic reach and there's a ton of opportunities. And then at some point it becomes more to pay to play and you lose a lot of that organic opportunity. So why would you wanna build your entire brand on one social media platform or maybe two social media platforms? You wouldn't because all it takes is one move from that social media platform that you have no influence on or the platform could even be gone and now you're in a panic because you're trying to figure out what the heck do you do everything that you built was on this one platform but now things have changed so what do most people do they start flooding to another platform and then years later the same exact thing happens again but if you really pay attention the brands that continue to grow year over year they're not just on one or two platforms they're not just capitalizing on the rented land they're also building their own land their own real estate they're invested in content that doesn't have to do with an algorithm they build on their own on websites, they have newsletters, they have a way to communicate and bring value to their audience consistently day after day, week after week, without relying on one or two specific platforms. Now, all that being said, am I saying that you shouldn't do social media? Am I saying that you shouldn't go all in on these platforms? Absolutely not. In a lot of ways, social media is the engine that drives your content machine. All I'm saying is you can't over leverage on those platforms. You gotta find a way to bring people off. You gotta find a way to communicate and bring value to your audience off of social media. You see the owned land in content work hand in hand with the rented and the rented works hand in hand with the owned. So it's not a question of or here, it's a question of and. And if this sounds interesting, you're going to want to stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to show you step by step how to build out your own content library on your land, on own land, and also incorporate it into your social media strategy on the rented land. Let's get into it. So first of all, what even is a content library? Well, according to the official social media and marketing dictionary that doesn't exist, a content library is a collection of content in a location that is owned by the creator or creators and distributed through multiple channels. So there you go. So don't overthink this. Just think about your website. You've got a page on there now that's a content library. Videos, text, opportunities to opt into the newsletters. And in just a second, we're gonna talk about how to build that out and what would go into that. Now, why would you wanna build out a content library? for a lot of reasons. And in the beginning of this video, we talked about some of them, but here's a few other reasons that you wanna be doing this. Number one, as we mentioned in the beginning of the video, you are building on your own land. You own the content. Now you may use YouTube or a video housing platform or something to house the actual content, but this is all being positioned on your page in your library. The second big thing you got with the content library is you now have a ton of search-based content that your potential customers are going to be searching for, whether that's on YouTube or Google or wherever it might be but you're also creating, and we're gonna get into some of the repurposing here in a second, you're also creating feed-based content that you can now distribute into the other feed-based platforms like a LinkedIn, like a TikTok, YouTube Shorts, Instagram. Number three, if you follow a similar blueprint as to what I'm gonna share here in a second on how we build out ours, you're going to have content every single week that enters the content library and you've got a million different ways to repurpose that content from video to clips to text to audio to visual to blogs, newsletters. It's an endless stream of great content. Number four, you're creating a pattern and a routine around content creation. Now we know this, but one of the biggest reasons that creators and companies don't stay consistent with content is they don't have a pattern. They don't have a good system or a process or a workflow, but this almost creates one for you because you've now got a rhythm that you're in every single week as you're building out this content library and everything else funnels off the back of it. And number five, and this might be an obvious one, but it's a big one, is SEO. You're now adding high value blogs with searchable keywords and video content from YouTube, which is owned by Google, onto your your website every single week. Now we don't want to wait for everyone to search for us or come to us. We obviously want to be out in the feeds creating demand, but that's what this content allows us to do too. Because number six is you're building your social media platforms at the same time. All of this content feeds into LinkedIn, feeds into TikTok, feeds into YouTube, feeds into Instagram or wherever you're going to be at. Okay. So now the moment you've been waiting for, how do you actually build a content library and how do you do it in a way that's extremely efficient, 
extremely effective, and it drives real business results and revenue. Here's the six step process, but again, you can do this a million different ways. This is just a blueprint that I'm gonna lay out today. Number one, you gotta start with a long form video. By long form, I don't mean it needs to be 20 minutes long. I mean anywhere from three minutes all the way up to 20 minutes potentially. Why do we need to start with a long form video? Because video builds trust and credibility and likability at such a deep level, and it's so much more emotional and memorable than just text, and it gives us unlimited opportunities to repurpose that video down into micro clips, into text, into blogs, newsletters, audio potentially, a ton of different things. So we wanna start there and we probably wanna film in 16 by nine because typically we're gonna upload that to YouTube. That's gonna go on the website. That could potentially go on a video-based platform where you just house videos, even if it's off social media. Again, a ton of different ways to do this. Personally, I like creating these videos for YouTube because again, why not build the YouTube channel as you're building your content library? And so we're gonna create one of these long form videos every single week. My recommendation, this is really important, get two to three to four to five videos ahead of time. So if you're listening to this right now and it's Wednesday and you're like, all right, Monday, we're gonna post this video and then we're gonna do it every single week after that, I'd probably build up two or three videos first. So then you're playing from ahead versus having to create a video that you're gonna post the very next week. You're gonna create more friction and stress in the process versus being a couple weeks ahead where you'll be able to create better content and more effectively. So once that video is recorded, it's gonna be sent to editing for well, for, for editing. Now, I'm not gonna get into the nuances of what you need to do in the editing, but I would make sure that the editing has some creativity to it. And if you look at some of my videos, you see that every few seconds something changes, there's something unique happening. You add in some fun, you make people smile, you add in a little bit of entertainment, we call that edutainment. Now, along with that long form video, we're gonna be smart here, right? And we're gonna chop this up strategically so that we can get three to five to maybe eight different clips per long form video to go on LinkedIn, TikTok, YouTube Shorts, and the various other platforms. Step number two, along with that video being edited, we also want to create a creative looking thumbnail for YouTube and then also to put on the website without getting too granular on thumbnails, because there's probably a whole video we could create around how to create great thumbnails. This is the most important thing that you need to know about thumbnails for your videos. The actual thumbnail itself should be emotionally driven. Now I have made this mistake in the past where I try to have the thumbnail say all this logical stuff about what the video is about. And I have, you know, seven or eight words on it. No, in some cases you don't even need words, but but in many cases, it may make sense to have some wording on there, but you want one to two to maybe three or four words maximum. You definitely need a human component on that thumbnail. So ideally it's the creator and they're doing something that is bringing out the emotion of the message. For example, if I'm talking about the biggest mistakes that companies make with their content strategies and I'm like freaking out and there's businesses blowing up in the background, well, now we've created a narrative. Now we've created a story with the thumbnail. So emotionally, we're pulling people in, but just like people buy with emotion and then just with logic, we've got them in emotionally now, they're excited, they've got it, they understand the premise, but we need to get them logically with the title. So maybe the title says, how to build a content strategy that actually works, or the step-by-step -step process on how to build out a content strategy, or how to avoid the pain point and get to X, Y, and Z result or solution. Because what we don't wanna do is get people so bought in emotionally with a thumbnail, and then they look at the title and they're kind of confused as to what the video is about. So we need to be clear, but we also need to be emotional and creative at the same time. Step Step number three, we need to transcribe that long form video. I would use something like a Descript where in the matter of a minute or two, you've got this long form video that is now completely transcribed. From there, we're gonna use an AI based software to take that transcription and have the AI turn it into a blog post, a newsletter, and potentially a few text or picture posts. We could also easily turn this into several video scripts. I'm telling you, the options are endless. Like everyone should be doing this. Now don't make this mistake with AI. You don't just plug in a transcription and say, hey, create me a blog post, create me a newsletter, Letter, create me LinkedIn post, create me video scripts, and then you take it and you go use it. You're going to need a human to curate that content, to quality check that content, to review it, make tweaks, make changes, give it the right prompts, give it the right context before you even plug it into the AI to make sure that you put good information in and you get good quality content out. So use all these tools, but don't think these tools are gonna do 100% of the work for you. But now at this point, we've got the blog, which can go along with the video and the thumbnail on our website. So if they're a reader, they can read through the entire thing. They can click on the video, watch the video. They're intrigued by the thumbnail. Number four, you're gonna create a section on your website that says content library. 
Now, if you wanna name it something different, go for it. But at minimum, it needs to be easily accessible to anyone that comes on your website. Number five, you definitely wanna give people an option to opt in to your newsletter. And if you're sitting there thinking, uh, we don't have any newsletter content, we don't do newsletters, you're going to now because now you've got all the transcriptions mixed with AI. So you've got these blog posts, you've got these newsletters, you've got all this content now because you're creating one long form video every single week. So give people an opportunity to opt into that newsletter and maybe it's access to exclusive content that maybe doesn't get posted right away in the content at library or it's unique or different. Maybe it's early access to the content. Whatever it is, you just gotta give them a reason to opt in. And finally, number six, when you've got all the content collected, you've got the video, the thumbnail, the blog post that's gonna go with it, you simply turn that over to your website designer and developer and they will add that to the content library every single week. At least that's how we do it. Now, if someone internally has access to that, then obviously they're gonna do it for you, but all they have to do is basically add the content that you created into the library. And that is how you build a modern day content library on your own land while you continue to build on social media and have a strong presence there as well. Now, don't get it twisted. We're gonna still create content outside of what I just showed you here, but the content library now gives you a foundation to build off of. And if you want to keep building on and off social media and become the number one brand in your industry, then you definitely want to get subscribed to this channel because that's what we're committed to bringing you every single week. We'll see you next time.